Thank you for staying with us on the newsroom. I am Abisola Adebayo. The presidential candidate of the new Nigeria People's Party, Rabi Kwakwanso, says it's erroneous for any presidential candidate to assume the 2023 presidential election is a birthright. Kwakwanso spoke during the weekend when he was featured on Editors Forum, an initiative of the Nigerian Guild of Editors in Lagos. During the run-up to the presidential primary of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Bola Tinubu, the eventual winner, had described the 2023 elections as his turn to be the president. Kwakwanso, however, said the APC and the PDP have failed Nigerians, adding that some presidential candidates are shying away from debate. The Zamfara State Coordinator of the All Progressive Congress Presidential Campaign Council, Senator Kabir Marafa, has argued that there is nothing wrong in a Muslim Muslim or Christian Christian ticket, saying the whole issue is hypocrisy. Marafa, who addressed journalists after a consultation meeting with various groups in Gosor, the state capital, assured the public that the party is committed to victory in the 2023 general elections. According to him, the APC always promotes unity among members and preaches peace. He said Nigerians should not be deceived as the country is not governed by religious principles. Ahead of the 2023 general elections, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has called for support to enhance women's participation in the election. The electoral body made the call at the Garki International Market during a sensitization visit, which was organized with the support of the European Union under support to democratic governance in Nigeria and aim to educate women on electoral processes. The deputy director in charge of the Gender Relations Division, Victoria Esamesi, told the market women that voting of women into elective positions will enhance the quality of their lives in terms of healthcare, agriculture, procurement, business, and access to funds, grants, and loans. She thereafter discouraged them against vote selling and mortgaging of their conscience and future on mundane things. China's Guangzhou has locked down its largest district while schools across Beijing have moved to online classes as authorities battle numerous COVID-19 flare-ups across the country. Guangzhou, a southern metropolis that is home to almost 19 million people on Monday, announced a five-day lockdown for the most populous district of Beijing and suspended dining in services and shut nightclubs and theaters in the main business district. COVID cases are rising across China with flare-ups in regions ranging from Zhengzhou in central Henan province to Chongqing in the southwest. The Independent Shareholders Association of Nigeria has kicked against the Central Bank of Nigeria's imposition of 0.5% levy on commercial banks to fund the Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria. According to the shareholders, Amcon had now received 453.47 billion naira's levies from commercial banks between 2020 and the first quarter of 2022. The shareholders said the corporation received 146.9 billion naira in 2020, 180.6 billion naira in 2021, and 125.9 billion naira in the first quarter of 2022 as levies from commercial banks, adding that there were deductions from the imposition of 0.5% charges on banks' total assets on and off balance sheets imposed on banks. According to the shareholders, these levies by Amcon were arming the returns on investment of the commercial banks in the country. Israeli Prime Minister-designate Benjamin Netanyahu won a defamation suit on Monday against a predecessor who had alleged that he, his wife and his son were mentally ill. But the court deeming the remarks a bid to arm Netanyahu's political career. Netanyahu's lawyer held the ruling as the shattering of another libel, an allusion to his client's assertion of innocence in three graft trials that overshadowed his last term as premier and are complicating his efforts to retake power. Eld Olmert, who served as centrist premier between 2006 and 2009, made the observation in a television interview last year, shortly before the conservative Netanyahu, then heading a caretaker government, was toppled an alliance of cross-partisan rivals. England, Wales and other European nations would not wear the One Love armband at the World Cup in Qatar because of the threat of players being booked. The captains, including England's Harry Kane and Gareth Bale of Wales, had planned to wear the armband during matches to promote diversity and inclusion. A joint statement from seven football associations, however, said they could not put their players in a position where they could face sporting sanctions. Well, that's all on the newsroom for the day. Many thanks for watching.